Hello, I'm EVM and welcome back to the channel and to a very snowy North Yorkshire. I want to talk about electric vehicles and the winter because if you believe the Daily Mail and mainstream media, electric vehicles are unusable in winter to the point of not being able to get one. And there's a lot of misinformation out there, put it, put it politely. Uh, so I thought I'd look into it a bit and tell you exactly how much, or rather on average how much, an EV would lose in terms of range during the winter months because they do lose range. They do have less range, should I say, over the colder periods. But how much? Because if it's this much, it's not really a problem. If it is substantial, then you certainly need to know about it before you get into one. Before we go any further, I just want to say a big thank you to Smart Home Charge, who installed my charger just on the wall there, um, long before any sponsorship started, and they are sponsoring this video, which helps keep the channel alive. They don't just install nationwide for Smart Home Charge Points. I used them long before the sponsorship started, so I can recommend them as a customer. They also have a website with a lot of useful information on it for both EV drivers, before you get it and after comparison tools for the EVs themselves, tariffs that you use in terms of home energy tariffs, and of course, rapid charging tariffs, long journey examples. So please do look at their website, which is smarthomecharge.co.uk, not just for chargers, but for information. And again, thank you to them for help keeping the channel here, because without sponsorships, I wouldn't be, quite frankly. Anyway, I'm gonna get in the car now, because I'm freezing my butt off. Get the heater on and the heated seat, even though it's an electric car. I'm also gonna test out my cross climate in the snow. Now, obviously, I'm in a toasty warm EV right now, and it's also one reason of why I would always spec a car with heated seats, which is good for bad backs. About the range loss in winter, this happens for a, a varying amount of reasons. I mean, there are so many variables, I cannot give anybody a specific answer. I can give you an average of an average because, as I said, there are so many things that affect range of any car, not just electric vehicles. For example, the range loss in a petrol or diesel car in winter is quite large as well. I mean, this morning it was minus four, I think, lots of snow. The amount of cars I saw on my street that were just idling on the driveway, waiting to get warm, obviously, so they could demiss the windscreen, with people scraping it down. That is far more efficient for a petrol or diesel car than it is in summer. So there's a range loss, and it always has been, for every car. It's just obviously more acute in an electric one because the range is that much shorter. So when we're not looking at anything new here. Range loss in cold months is normal and ordinary and expected. So what ultimately does it affect in an EV? The heater is clearly going to be one of them because it's like having, well, it is an electric heater. It's like getting an electric fan or a, a one bar fire or something like that. The, the energy has to come from somewhere. And people sometimes see that as a negative, but actually, for me, it's the opposite. You see, it's far more efficient to get energy that's, well, I won't say it's, it's not 100% efficient, but the majority of energy that it puts into heating the car actually does heat the car. But you only get that when you ask for it. There is no heat being produced if you don't turn the heater on, at least for the cabin. And that means it's very efficient. A petrol or diesel car gives you heat all the time and way, way more than you could ever use. So even if it's 35 degrees in the middle of summer, that engine will produce in a tremendous amount of heat that is just literally going into the atmosphere. So it's criminally inefficient and, and it's always producing that heat. That for me is a bad thing because you're wasting money. It's just like, and a dad, any dad will know exactly what I'm about to say now. It's just like having the central heating on with the windows open. You're just throwing money out of the air, out of the window. And people are bothered about that, but when it comes to cars, they're not. Obviously, this video isn't about efficiency, it's about range. And range is more often than not more important to people than efficiency because I would always pick personally to definitely be able to get to my destination than to 
be more efficient at getting to my destination. People want to make sure they get there above and beyond all else. So there's pros and cons, but there's that's life, it's compromises. So where ultimately does most of the energy go in winter that you don't have to worry about in the warmer months in an electric car? Heating, as I said, is clearly a big one because you're putting all that effort, all that energy into heating the cabin up. And it takes a lot of energy to do that. You know, to take this from, well, if it was parked outside, minus four, I think it was last night, minus five, to a toasty 20 degrees, that needs a lot of energy. To maintain that, less so. Another thing which electric vehicles use, uh, not all, but a lot of them do now, certainly the new ones, is to maintain the battery temperature itself. So they have a, a thermal battery management system because when batteries get too cold, like really cold, it can increase very slightly the degradation curve for the battery. So you don't want them to get phenomenally cold. Like any battery, it doesn't do them any favors. So a lot of cars like this one has thermal battery management built into it. So that's why you may come to an EV the next day after a very cold night, if it's outside and it's not plugged in, with a few percent knocked off, because the car will have used a bit of its energy to maintain the temperature, uh, or a stable temperature, on its battery pack. A third thing is, of course, that batteries run less efficiently in colder weather. Just like a petrol engine, just like a diesel engine, until it gets up to temperature, there's an efficiency loss. So you factor all them three things in, you're using the heater presumably, the uh, efficiency loss of the temperatures and the thermal battery management system, if it has one, you've got, a, you've got a loss there. That's where the range drop comes in for an EV compared to summer months or something like that. And just to clarify, the air conditioning in uh, summer does have a range hit, but it's far less um, noticeable than uh, a heater is. So. Uh, yeah, in some it's not really a problem. And of course, the temperature of the batteries is always pretty much stable, or at least a good temperature, so it doesn't have to worry about heating it up either. So that's where this kind of triple whammy comes from in the winter months for EVs. Uh, but how much does it realistically have an effect on range? This is the big thing, isn't it? We all know why it uses stuff now. It's just a case of how much. It's all about averages. An average of an average of an average. I can't say for your specific car what the range drop will be because, again, there are so many variables. The temperature outside, the temperature you specify inside, how you drive has, has an effect. Uh, the thermal battery management system, does it have one, does it not? Uh, There's just a billion things out there. Um, so, again, this is an average. It's not specific, specific for you. Some will be lower, some will be higher. That's how we get to averages. Now I've really rammed on that point, hopefully nobody will point out that their e-Nero is more efficient than others in the comment section. Uh, okay, so the general rule of thumb that I use when speaking to anyone about EVs in winter is that knock off about 20% of the real world range. That's very important. The WLTP range that manufacturers state is almost never accurate. Again, this is nothing new. How many decades have we had it where a manufacturer says you will get 50 miles per gallon out of this engine, but in reality you never or almost never achieve that. And it's the same with the range of electric vehicles. Take it with a pinch of salt. We always state what that real world range is in a car review because it's far more re relevant than of course um, the WLTP range I just mentioned. So knock off 20% of the real world range. So let's imagine you have a car that you say does 150 miles in the real world. That's what the reviews say, that's what Google has come up with. Not 20% of that. So that will give you a range of 120 miles. So you've lost 30. Obviously, if you have a car that does 250 miles in the real world, then not 20% of that, that would be 50 miles lost. So it'll do 200 in winter, 250 in the real world under mild circumstances. Now remember that is also based on the same driving. There's no point in saying I get 150 miles on the motorway 
and then comparing it to 150 miles urban driving. That has a big effect in itself. You will always get more on urban streets than you will on a motorway, for example. So on the assumption that your journeys are identical, I would say the 20% reduction is about right. That's what I've experienced in the near seven years I've driven EVs and car reviews. And I think a lot of people will say the same. Again, some will be more than that, some will be less. That's the whole point of an average. There are variations. For example, today I'm going to four different places of work, which ultimately means that I will arrive at my first destination with a nice toasty warm car. So the car's heated itself once. I will then set off again about an hour later, which means the car will cool down and then will have to heat itself up again and then again and then again until I get home. That will have a bigger effect than just going to work and then back from work again because I'm effectively doing four cold starts as opposed to just two there and back. So I would knock a little bit more off for me because I'm heating the car up a few times in that, on that day rather than just once or twice. There are many things you can do to negate this. In fact, rather than tell you all of them, watch this video where I basically give you a few tips on how to negate the range loss of EV driving in winter. One thing that is definitely worth mentioning in this video though is that preheating the car has a massive effect on your winter range or rather how much you lose off it. So for example, this car was plugged into my house before I set off. I told the car that I wanted to leave at seven o'clock this morning. So the car automatically by itself, and a lot of them you can do this on the app, it got the car warm, it got the battery up to temperature before I set off using mostly the energy from the house. So I set off with the same amount I do in summer, but the car's already warm. So at least the journey there to work is about the same. It's only a little bit worse than a summer one because I'm, I'm already toasty warm. And this is another thing which I feel I need to highlight, which is an often forgotten massive benefit of EV ownership. As I said earlier, there were many, many people scraping down their cars this morning, leaving their car idling in the drive, waiting for it to heat up. That's a five, 10 minute job at least. Now you might just think, well, I set off five, 10 minutes earlier, but either way, I can spend five or 10 minutes more in bed purely because all I do is tell the car the night before what time I want to set off or just as I did with my pre previous Nissan Leafs, turn the heating on via the app. So 15 minutes before as I'm having my breakfast, I press the heater button, the car is then toasty warm, there's no ice on the windscreen, I just get in and go. So I'm saving five or 10 minutes every winter morning compared to a combustion engine vehicle. People always forget things like this when they go on about having to spend 20, 30 minutes charging every now and then. You save lots of little bits of time all over the place with EVs, but occasionally lose it when you have to charge on the public charging network anyway. So to reiterate, use the preheat. It negates quite a bit of that range loss. You lose some range through, well, if I, I won't say lose, you use some of your range by heating the car up you use some of your range by maintaining the battery temperature. And of course, you will lose some range due to cold, less efficient batteries. Oh, it's another Model 3, hello. He's in one of those posh long range versions. I feel I need to mention the turning the heater off when it's freezing and you're stuck on the M6 in traffic. You know, cause that's what typically gets mentioned in the comment section of the Daily Mail. Oh, think of all the people stuck in traffic in electric vehicles who are freezing to death. No, 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 no. You'll probably lose, once it's up to temperature, about, well, it, again, varies between cars, maybe 1% per hour, two if it's ballistically cold, because maintaining a temperature is far easier than getting it up to temperature. So unless you're stuck on the motorway for 24 hours and you're only on 30%, it's not a problem. But you know what? It has happened to me a few times over the last six, seven years. The only time I would turn my heater off is if I was close to not getting to my destination. So for example, if I was 15 miles away from home and I only had 15 miles worth of range, then I would turn it off. So the whole thing of being stuck in a motorway and not being able to use your heater, 
you have to be really stupid to put yourself in that situation. Uh, and even then, it's not a problem. But again, spec heated seats. Because if you really, 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 really want to do that, a heated seat is far more efficient than heating the entire cabin up. And it only uses the 12 volt battery, not the main traction battery. So that is what I would always use, the heated seat, if I ever got in that situation, which is why I always spec heated seats on any new car, if possible. So there we go, that's pretty much it guys. 20% uh, range loss off the real world range. Very important, that real world part of it. Don't just look at the WLTP range and knock 20% off that. This is again, effectively what the media do. They look at the WLTP range, which will say 200 miles, when in reality it'll be 160. Then they knock off 20% off 160 to make it, let's say 120. So they go, oh my God, manufacturer says it's 200, but you only get 120 in winter. That's ridiculous. No, 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 you're knocking two things off there. So yeah, there we go. That's the rough guide. Uh, thank you again to Smart Home Charge for sponsoring this. Do visit their website for not just charging related stuff, for tariff stuff, for um, uh, comparisons for EVs, for rapid charging costs, all that sort of stuff. It's a very useful website. Please go and visit it. Uh, and again, thanks uh, for, for sponsoring the channel. And thank you for watching this. Um, please become a member if you can. It's only 99p. We're too cheap for the pound store. That's how cheap it is. Uh, or just click the subscribe button if you just want to watch more videos. Uh, so once again, thank you for watching this. I'll see you soon.